Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Trek Cannon. So today we're doing a review of season one, episode five, Star Trek, Strange New Worlds, entitled Spock Amok. Now, <laughs> man, look, remember last video I told you guys that if they were to make, uh, um, you know, an end or even a bad episode, you know what I'm saying? I'd, I'd be like, hey, but what about episodes one through four? Look. Episode 5, Spock and Mock. This episode was just great. It was This was that nice filler episode that lets you just have a good time. Let you sit back and just, just smile, crack up, you know, let, let everybody just relax. You can basically consider this a shore leave episode. So let's just get right into what's going on. Now, this particular episode takes uh, place from the perspective of Spock. All right, everybody's uh, everybody's famous, loved, resident Vulcan. You know what I mean? So Spock's wife, T'Pring, comes aboard. And I always say T'Pring is fine. Spock's wife, T'Pring, comes aboard. And uh, she has this little mission of basically um, coming to see Spock, but basically talking to this uh dissident this vulcan dissident to try to get him to accept logic and everything like that he's a he's a uh he's a criminal they trying to bring him back in you know all that good stuff <coughs> excuse me so uh, in the midst of this we are um treated to a new species that is looking that the federation is looking to join is trying to get to join the federation now Pike, you know, of course, we get to see April on board again. It's always nice to see April. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. When I seen the shirt that Captain Pike had on, this one right here, right? The the, the OG green captain's shirt, you know, um, that was a real nice throwback to this right here. You know what I mean? So for people who, and you know, I've always wondered what the color green was, you know, because even Picard, when he had his smooth um you know, this little jacket on right here, this modification of the uniform, uh, you know, it was still based in his, <clears throat> excuse me, it was recovering from a little bit of sickness. It was still based in his command color, which was red. Now, so I don't know what the green is. You know, I'm trying to figure out what, what that green is, you know, it's, but it was smooth looking for them to put it in there. Had the, had the, uh, had the leather on and everything like that. So. We get the story from a uh, like I said from the from Spock's perspective, and they're trying to convince this new species to join the Federation. Now, we also get a little story between um, uh, between uh, the pilot and between um, Nurse Chapel. All right, now, oh, and number one, and of course Lieutenant Laai. Now, this is the classic shore leave episode, like I was talking about. And in the classic shore leave episode, it's always fun. You know, whenever there's a shore leave episode, I'm always engaged and looking forward to them. Now, so let's just talk about it. First of all, Vulcan is hot. Vulcan is hot. Every time they show Vulcan, it looks like it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. We already knew the Vulcan was hot from the episode of Mock Time. But look, when they show Vulcan in this episode in Spark's Dream at the beginning, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, this is just, there's no way in the world. I can be on Vulcan. Nah. But uh, we go through the little Calife and everything like that where Spock has to fight itself. It's a nice little, um, it's a nice little, uh, uh, I guess, showing of the battle that Spock always has had between his Vulcan and his human side. Now, we get to see the Envoom. I like the way they modified it, made it more modern, looked a lot more menacing, not as smooth and cheesy as the original Envoms. Let me see, uh, what else? I mean, I'm sorry, the original LARPers. Um, Spock was dreaming. <laughs> Excuse me, guys, I'm gonna be kind of slip, you know, skipping over them because I just seen the episode, you know. Uh, let me see, so Spock was dreaming. We're going to the opening of the episode. Now, if I go into spoilers, I'm going to try to stay away from them, but y'all know how I roll. And I took a few notes as I was watching the episode. So, that leather jacket that Spock had on, I want one of those. So, if anybody is into making costumes, the leather jacket that Spock had on for that for that uh, ritual, oh, look, 
I'm gonna have to get me one of those. That was all right. They even had the OG of mock time music. You know what I mean? Every, look, every time I hear the OG of mock time music, right? All I think about is okay, back in the day. Okay, I'm okay. Just side note, back in the day, right? Me and my army homies, right? Who used to sit down and watch Star Trek and the original series, and when that music came on, it was one of my homies that we used to call it Tick, you know, like the blue dude, right? It used to remind us exactly of that dude, right? He, him and Tick cut from the same cloth, but we used to call him Tick. Anyway, whenever that song came on, right, he would take my two, uh, he would take my Kirk dial and he would take um, my Spock dial just to, just, just to get on my nerves. Well, figurines, fig, figurines, they're not dials, they're figurines. But anyway, he used to take them every time the music come on, right? He'd be like, dun, 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 dun. anyway, so whenever I hear that music, that always pops into my head, that image, and I try to choke him every time. But anyway, um, so Spock's human dream, you know, I thought that that was a cool little, you know, showing of that war. Now, like I said, this is going to be Spock's story, you know, and this is um, uh, a pretty interesting one. Now, did you guys notice those glasses that Spock had put on the table? How do you drink out of those? How do you, you know, you'll poke yourself in the eye, nostril, all kind of, you'll mess yourself up with those glasses, but they looked awesome. Now, again, we get into the Vulcan kiss when T'Pring comes on board. And the Vulcan kiss to me is still not a good representation of how a Vulcan would interact. You know, everything that we've noticed the Vulcans has always been I would say touchy feely, but there were hand movement, hand gestures. There, there, it was real important for, uh, I guess, Vulcans to be beyond or above such primitive acts. We'll put it that way. Like when Spock and um, um, Amanda, when they used to interact, you know, they used to just, you know, they walk around, you know, do the thing, you know. And I like the way that they put the whole, you know, um, you know although here and never parted, you know, I like that whole little Vulcan thing. But the Vulcan kiss, I don't know about that. But I'll tell you what, Vulcan women give you shit. Vulcan women can give you some shit. Vulcan, look, I I, I don't know what is the, I don't know which one is the is most tripped out. An emotional woman who giving you shit or an extreme logical woman giving you shit. Because Supreme was giving him the she was getting she was handing them the left and right i'm telling you she was handing them the left and right and there wasn't nothing he could say like i was i was thinking to myself oh wow so this would be this what this what the conversation with the missus would be like if uh if she actually you know argued at me the way that i think that a female should argue you know just look just take all the emotion out of it it'll be like that and then i'll just be getting hit with the left and rights even still so basically it's just a no-win situation now, like I said, I like the green shirt call back. I thought that was nice. You know, we even got to mention the Tellarites. I wish they would have shown the Tellarite. It would be nice to see what a Tellarite looks like um, now. And just for the people who don't know, this is a Tellarite right here. You know, they one of the original founding members of the Federation, real important member of the Federation, but one of those species that you really ever get to see. I don't even think I recall seeing a Tellarite as part of Starfleet, I'm going to have to look that up. And if there is a Tellarite Starfleet member, i put them right here too because it might surprise some of you guys. Now, as I was saying, everybody goes on shore leave and everything like that. And uh, as number one and La'an is walking around, first of all, La'an just gives, she, she her, her and Drummer, she just, they just the same person to me. La'an is Starfleet, if, if uh, Drummer joins Starfleet from the Expanse, that's that's Lieutenant Laon. But anyway, we get to see uh, what's going on with this uh, Enterprise Bingo, and I like the fact that they got into this because there's always little games and stuff like that that lower enlisted or junior officers or something like that play, and in this one, you know, just to relieve the stress and the monogamy of you know trips. In this one, we get to see a little bit bit of that because. They bust two uh, crew members who were doing some illegal stuff in an airlock. Now, 
I like the contrast that they gave between the interrogation tactics of number one and the interrogation tactics of Laon. Laon had the girl in there crying and everything. And number one sitting there with the other lady just cracking up. I mean, with the other dude just cracking up. <coughs> Again, excuse me. Just cracking up, right? And it's interesting that they say that number one is the person who is the fun killer. Because she seems very personable. Now... They decide to start this, uh, this uh, basically this Enterprise Bingo game. And it's basically little things that, as Trekkies, we've always wondered about. Like, if you're chewing gum and you get teleported, right? When, you, when you're reconstituted, what's up with the flavor of the gum or the food or something like that? You know, like, is it is it reconstituted before? You know, like, it was cool that they put that in there. Those old style turbo lifts, you know, you, the, how does, you know, does each person have to wait? What does the computer do if two people grab the, uh, the handles at the same time, turn them and then say something at the same time? You know, how does the computer prioritize which person and place to go to? So it was nice that they put those little things in there. Now, it was this one scene during their Enterprise bingo that I'm going to get to later because it was an amazing scene and I think it's only been twice that I could recall where this shot has taken place but I'm, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself so number one she has this nickname you know where fun goes to die like I was talking about so you know they going around seeing um, basically how to relate to the crew and why you know get a better perspective of the command staff and the ship as a whole, you know, from the low enlisted. Now, just so everybody know, you've never been cussed out, you know, uh, like you've been cussed out from like a Vulcan female. Because the second time, you know, um, that uh, to bring start talking to Spock about this duty thing, I was thinking to myself, "Ooh, Spock, you getting body blows? You getting body blows, Spock? Come on, man, Give on. stick a move, man, stick a move." But Really wasn't nothing he could say. So Spock ends up talking to Nurse Chapel, right? And it's really cool that because in a oh yeah, I go with the Kurtzmans. Because in a Kurtzman Star Trek, they had Yahura. Come on, man, Yahura and Spock together. No, man, that's not how I, no, that's not that's not right. But in this you can tell that Spock and uh well for me, at least from nurse chapel's perspective she has a nice attraction to spock which she's always had and they touched on it a few times in prior episodes but in here you can really tell that nurse chapel is really you know she really gushing for spock you know so a pet sealer they talked to, excuse me they talked about a pet sealer uh once uh when bones was a uh, kid in spock he was like, yo, man, you had a big old teddy bear and everything like that. And Spock was basically like, look, that teddy bear had, what was it, three-inch fangs and six-inch claws or something like that. Or I might got him backwards. But this is a sealer. Can you imagine being a kid running around? Can you imagine something like this just running around on your planet? Just, come on. Come on. No, I can't I can't have no pet sealers. That's, no, no. So, Spock and Supreme end up switching bodies. Oh, man. So we get the whole fish out of water mixed in with this, too. It, this episode just had a lot. Now, the purpose of them switching bodies was basically so that, because, of course, they keep going through problems. Tupring is not liking the fact that Spock seems to place his duty above her. And Spock is trying to figure out how to um, best relate to his wife with the underlying feeling that he believes he's not good enough for her because of his half-human side. So they're having some issues. So he decides, okay, well, the best way to do this is to um, change personalities, go through our Vulcan ritual, because Vulcans have rituals for everything. We're going to switch bodies, but what ends up happening is they, get, they actually switch bodies instead of perspectives. They end up getting stuck like this. Now, the delegation... Only wants to talk to Spock, but Spock is to preen. They have to explain this to uh, Pike, who, oh my God, 
his responses to this stuff, this situation. <coughs> Sorry about that. His responses to the situation. Oh my God. I got a kick out of it. I was just on the floor dying. Look. What would you do? You know what I'm saying? The people only want to talk to your first officer. Your first officer is inhabited by his wife. You know what I mean? Uh, she has to go down and complete her mission, but it's actually Spock. She, he, Spock takes her long, God, Nurse Chapel. That don't go where well. else. This Vulcan dude ends up throwing some of the greatest insults about humans I've ever heard from a Vulcan. He's like, didn't you guys evolve from primates? I see y'all kept, I see you kept a lot of those attributes. Oh my God, I was like, oh, that was, they should have had that, that meme where everybody was like, ooh, that would have been perfect for that part. But anyway, Spock ends up stealing on that dude, man, knocks him out. Um, uh, man, Nurse Chapel ends up falling more in love with Spock. She don't know, she don't know how to, she don't know how to convey this to Ortega because Ortega would probably be like, um, that's our crew member and he's married you know that's kind of weird right there you know so she keeps it to herself the um pike ends up saving the day with the delegation because they are ultimate or radical um empaths and it's interesting because everybody who they related to everybody each species that they interacted with they took on that species attributes but it wasn't a form of copying right because that's what i thought it was too when i first was watching i was like are they copying everybody who they run across? You know, what identity do these species have of their own? But is the way that they view the world is that they just, they respect and view people the best who is able to sympathize or see from their perspective. All right. So as these people were switching to them, as these people were switching to the cultures that they were in the cup in, uh, uh, coming in contact with, they were noticing, hey, why should we be part of this when none of you are willing to do the same for us? None of you are willing to take on our perspective like we were taking on your perspectives, you know? And I thought that that was a really nice addition to that species. It That added so much depth to that species, which would have otherwise just been a throwaway species that we wouldn't remember, you know what I mean? Like, um, but that added so much to them. And now I can get back to what I wanted to say about their space sail ship which by the way was beautiful whoever designed that space sail ship did an outstanding job one of the things one of the tasks one of the final tasks that um number one and la'an took on was basically putting up this tunnel shield and going out onto the saucer section to the primary hall now it's only been i think two times where they've ever had a shot on the outside of the enterprise from that perspective um with people not in environmental suits you know they had a few they had a lot of those times with trip and you know malcolm would be out on a uh hole in the enterprise with their magnetic boots and everything like that doing repairs i'm not talking about that i'm talking about unassisted on just standing on a hole with it uh and standing on the primary hole and that would be the time where um in true q where uh data not data but q and amanda what's the name amanda anyway Q and the female Q were playing it basically and they ended up on the outside of the ship and the other time where Data was having those dreams and uh, was flying around on the outside of the ship now and was standing there now having number one and Laanne out there especially when that sail ship went past that was beautiful and then for the 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 meaning behind this oldest deck plate never that this is the oldest deck plate that has never been changed on the whole of enterprise and everybody signs it that was nice and we finally get to see what number one's full name is which is what is it una chin riley riley let me tell you something riley is a very important name in the original series and for followers of the original series you guys know exactly who i'm talking about when i talk about Ensign Riley. Now, I wonder, based on the hyphenation of the name, if Una and Riley are related. If maybe they're Riley, because Una's a bit older than Ensign Riley. So I'm guessing maybe Riley's dad, you know, maybe Riley is Una's son, you know, 
that would be wow that would be a very interesting little connection and understanding as to why riley got away with the hijinks that he used to get away with on the ship but overall this episode was a great filler episode we got the laughs we got to we got to expand a little bit on uh vulcan culture uh, we got to hear the old classic of Mark Tan music, you know what I mean? And a few of the other sprinkles of uh, original series music throughout the episode. We got to see, we got to know a little bit more about Una as far as now her whole name and how she wants to be, how she wants to intermingle and how she wants the crew to see her. And the flip side of how uh, La'an wants the crew to see her. She don't mind the terror, you know, the fear and everything like that. And I wonder if that's part of her little con gene, you know what I mean? So, um, this episode was great. Like I said, uh, it was a nice, it was a nice, um, you know, foray into Spock and to Pring's relationship and how that's going to lead to the inevitability of what's going to happen for people who know, uh, for people who don't know, y'all just gonna have to watch it, man. You just gonna have to watch it. You just gonna have to watch it. But um, we got to, again, we got to go in a little bit into uh, the re relationship between Chapel and Spock, the growing relationship that way. Um, got a little bit of Ortega. You know, I love me some Ortega. So um, your hero was kind of on the back burner in this episode, but that's fine. We get to see how everybody views working with Hammer as a punishment, you know, because he's me. You know, so overall, great episode, man. I, I'm really, really, really digging, you know, five episodes in and. I can safely say that Star Trek Strange New Worlds is shaping up to be amongst the best of Star Trek um, Star Trek series. You know, I mean, wow, is is really kicking ass. It's doing this thing. Tell me what you guys think. How did you guys like the episode Spock of Mock? Uh, did you guys crack up to it as well? You know, I'm telling you, it's a good thing to wake up in the morning and see. But leave your comments in the comment section below. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not. And ring the bell for any future content. And take a look at some of the past videos, man. Go through them. I think I make some pretty good ones, you know. Um, peace. Recycle. Say the wells, you guys. Be cool.